Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage speaker and PragerU personality, Will Witt. Woo! What's up, guys? Hola, amigos. How are we doing out here? Just want to say, first of all, we're going to put the rumors to rest. I'm not black. But I'm here anyway, and I want to say thank you to all of you for being here and for Candace for putting on this great event. Can we give everyone, please, a round of applause? Thank you, everyone. It's crazy to watch that video. We made that video about two years ago, and it still never gets old, watching it every single time. But it's funny how the left thinks that they get to dictate how people are supposed to think and feel. And they tell people who are Mexican who feel free that they have internalized racism. One of the stupidest things I've ever heard. We did another video in California, another California university. You know, if you know anything about California universities, it doesn't go too well when I go there. <laughs> but we made a video, it was for Thanksgiving. I dressed up as a Native American. And we were going and giving out pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. And then asking people what they were thankful for. You know, it was a very heartfelt video. We had a, a black guy with me. He was a black pilgrim. <laughs> and so we went there, and we started filming video and everything. And then didn't go as planned, obviously. And some people came up to us, some leftists, and they attacked us. They were, gave us death threats. They yelled at us, said horrible racist things. And eventually they chased us off campus, tore off my clothes, and that was the end of that. And so after hearing about, you know, all the horrible things that they said I was, racist and terrible and cultural appropriation, I decided to put their ideas to the test, right? If what, maybe what they said is actually true. So I drove 900 miles outside of Los Angeles to the uh, Navajo Indian Reservation outside Window Rock, Arizona, to ask them what they thought. And not one of them was offended by the Washington Redskins name. Not one of them was offended by cultural appropriation. And not one of them wanted other people getting offended for them on their behalf. It is cultural appreciation, not appropriation. And you know, these young people, people my age, are going to university now, and they're coming out more stupid than when they went in. They're professors. I mean, it's just, I mean, I was there three years ago at the University of Colorado Boulder. It's a People's Republic of Boulder. But their professors are teaching them how horrible America is, how terrible white people are, and that getting triggered is the norm, and that canceling people and shaming people for a difference of opinion is how we should all live our lives. So what does all this mean? All these white leftists getting offended? It really means that white leftists are the most racist people in America. They think that their virtue signaling antics are helping black people or helping minorities when in reality, it undermines them. Black people don't want you to get offended for them. You're doing it for yourself and so that other people around you will think that you're woke. But let me tell you something, white leftists. There is nothing woke about saying you care about the feelings and plight of black people when you then turn around and advocate for the same programs and policies that have kept black people down in America for decades. You know, you think about something like affirmative action, right? Affirmative action sounds great on paper, but it's racist all the way through. It basically says, oh, black and Hispanic people, you're not as smart as white people, so we need to give you a leg up. Is that not racist? But you know why white people are doing better in a lot of ways than black and Hispanic people in this country? Because of the economic oppression that the left has put on them for the last 60 years. And I want to talk about the reasoning for this. I think it's incredibly important to get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is that leftism and this type of culture has become a religion and a cult in America. As America and the West have gone away from Judeo-Christian values, they have needed something to replace that, and leftism has been the answer. Black Lives Matter has been that replacement for God. You have been... Nietzsche, you guys know Nietzsche, philosopher from the 1800s, had the famous line that said, God is dead. People think this is a, a celebratory thing that God is dead, but he said it as a warning. 
a warning that people would still need some sort of meaning in their lives. And this is where leftism comes in. You, know, you think of the example of posting a black square on Instagram, right? This is something that is one of their tenets of their religion, where they are showing their solidarity for black people. That, oh, I care about black people so much that I'm going to post a black square. What happens if you don't post a black square? You get shamed, you're called a racist, you get ostracized, they try and destroy your reputation. But the funniest part about this is that I can guarantee you that less than 0.1% of the people who actually posted a black square on their Instagram have ever done anything for black people. If you actually cared about black people, you'd be trying to get more police in their communities. You'd be advocating for fatherhood in these communities. You'd be trying to get rid of the welfare state. You would try to get rid of affirmative action. But they don't do that. That's way too difficult. They just want to sit at home on their butt and post a black square on their Instagram so that all their friends will think they care about black people. In reality, they don't care at all. You know, when I was, I, I was an atheist my entire life. And now I'm a, a Christian person, which is a wonderful thing. Thank you. Thank you. And when I was coming to God and becoming more religious, the, the Christians around me, they weren't shaming me for being an atheist. They weren't telling me how terrible I was. They, gave, they were the most heartwarming and welcoming people that I've ever met in my life. They loved me. They wanted to, to bring me in. This is not how the religion of leftism works. It works on shame. It works on guilt. They have tried to cancel people like me. They have tried to cancel people like Candace Owens. I'm sure they've tried to cancel people in this room as well. But are you going to let the left destroy you? No, we are not. I live in California. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's on fire. The things you hear are true. It is on fire. There's homeless people everywhere, poop, high taxes, traffic. I mean, it's a terrible place to live, and I, I live there. <laughs> but I love it. I still love it in a lot of ways. Regardless, what I'm trying to say is that leftist policies have ruined California. But that doesn't just happen overnight. That has happened because conservatives in California were too weak to stand up and do anything about what's been happening to their state. That is what has happened to conservatives for the last 30 years with not doing enough. Do you want to see your state turn into the next California? No. I, I can tell you, you don't. <laughs> From experience. I can't tell you how important it is that you guys stand up for your beliefs and stand up for what you believe in. If you don't, everything continues to get worse. The universities, Hollywood, the media... So if you're in your classroom and your teacher asks you a question that you want to act like a conservative on, or you want to say how you really believe, speak up. Say it. If you're at your work and they ask you, say it. If you don't, it will continue to get worse and this country will be truly lost. What defines every American is not the color of their skin, but the values that they hold. And the left and their religion is trying to destroy this country and dismantle everything that we hold dear. Thank you guys so much for having me. Appreciate it.